Hey, I'm Joseph, a senior developer advocate with AppSmith. And in this session, we're going to learn all about AppSmith's version control with Git. So AppSmith's version control with Git is the easiest way for enterprise organizations to build internal tools with continuous improvement and continuous delivery, and it takes less than a minute to set up. In this video, we'll cover the benefits of using version control with Git, how to connect your app to a Git repo, and then we'll learn about some of those extra security features like branch protection and continuous delivery. All right, let's check it out. All right, first we're gonna take a look at some of the features and benefits of using Git, and then we'll walk through how to connect it to your app. And finally, we'll do actual live demo of setting up that connection, making an edit, merging in some changes, and pushing those to the production branch. But first, what is version control with Git? So this works with any Git service, and it allows you to create branches and version history. It gives you full CI CD control from AppSmith, so you don't have to leave the AppSmith editor to create branches, merge changes, or any of those other steps that you would normally do from GitHub. But if you want to, you can still go to GitHub and see the changes or do any actions from there. So the benefits of using this feature, it's going to improve collaboration with your team, allowing multiple developers to work on features at the same time. You could have two different devs building different features and then merge those changes both back into the development branch. It enhances code quality because this allows multiple developers to review code before pushing it to production. It also increases security because you can lock the master or the main branch and protect it from any edits so that the production version doesn't change while you're working on those new updates. And that also comes into play with risk mitigation. By locking that master branch, you don't have to worry about an accidental edit taking down your production app. And this also streamlines the deployment process because you have that central place where you're editing the apps and controlling the branches and the delivery to production. So it really just enhances the entire process, not just the app building itself, but the entire life cycle of the app. Okay, so how does it work? You start out by connecting a single app to a single Git repo. So it's a little different than the server backup mechanism, which is at the server level. It's backing up all of your apps and the users and the configuration. That's a separate type of backup. So what this does, it links that one app to a repo using the SSH URL from GitHub or GitLab, and you use that to create a deploy key. Once you've linked those two, then you can do everything from AppSmith. So to get started, you just choose your provider. We support GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, Azure, and many others, as long as it's following that Git protocol. You'll want to start out with an empty repo. Now you can import an app from an existing repo, but here we're just looking at setting up a new one. So you want to connect to an empty repo. After you choose the provider, you'll want to copy that URL. So go to GitHub or wherever your repo is at, copy the SSH URL and paste that in here. Then you can generate an SSH key. Then you copy this key from AppSmith and paste that back into GitHub or your Git provider to create a deploy key. As soon as you've given that deploy key right access and click connect Git, AppSmith will do a check and actually establish the connection. Then optionally, you can import an existing app from Git. So initially you would want to use that blank repo and connect it to an app. But once you're ready to move an app between servers, if you want to use one server for development and another for production, you can import an app from the dev server into the production server, reestablish that Git connection, and now you'll have two different servers with two different copies of the same app, both linked back to the same repo. This allows your team to collaborate through that repo and across workspaces and across servers. So again, this works, like I said, across workspaces and server instances. You can have as many servers as you want, when you have a business or enterprise license, you can use that license on any number of servers. And then all of the usage is aggregated into a single account. So you could 
independently deploy servers for dev and prod and staging or for different environments or regions. If you've got areas where there's GDPR or you need to set up separate servers for each uh, customer. So lots of different approaches there. And it's fine to use one server for dev and prod and just use separate workspaces, or you could use multiple. And we're gonna look at that more here in just a second. So the different server setups, you may just want to have a single server. This is the most basic approach where you would do development in one branch, commit and merge those changes back to the repo, and then pull those changes to the master branch. And all this is happening for a single app, but it's split into branches within that one app and the different copies are going to be stored in your Git provider. Now, if you want, you can actually use two different servers here. So the setup would be a little different, but it's still pushing changes from your development branch, committing those to the repo and then pulling into a master branch. Only this time that branch is running on a completely different AppSmith server. So that's totally up to you how you wanna structure that. You can also create another level where you have your main branch and then you create a development branch and then add extra branches from there for each feature. So you could have dev one working on feature one and this is a branch off of the development branch. And then here we have dev two building a separate feature also off of the dev branch. Once both of them have merged changes back into the dev branch, you can aggregate those changes for multiple developers and do a single pull request to merge those changes into the main branch. Now, branch protection allows you to lock this branch so that it won't receive any edits, but you can use a pull request and continuous delivery to actually approve that in GitHub and have those changes pushed to the production app. Branch protection is going to show a warning if somebody opens the editor, even though they have edit access, if that branch is protected, they won't be able to edit it immediately. You actually have to remove the protection and have the permission to remove it before any edits can be made to that master or main branch. And then once that branch is locked, you still want some way to update it. So continuous delivery allows you to pull changes on that remote branch whenever there's an edit. If you want to automate that and have those changes automatically pulled in, then you're able to get the benefits of the protection and at the same time streamline that flow with continuous delivery. So as for the pricing and different features, there are a, there's a limit of three private repos in the free tier, but you can have unlimited public repos. So if you want to back up your apps and you really shouldn't have any credentials or anything private in the app itself, that's stored separately in the data source, um, but you may still want all those repos to be private. So it's a limit of three in the free version and then unlimited in the business version. And then in the enterprise plan, we're also adding that continuous delivery feature and then branch protection and default branches. The default branch lets you have multiple servers where one server always defaults to the production branch of each app and another server might always use the staging or test branch. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the features. Now let's check out how to actually connect your app to Git. All right, I got a basic start to an app here, just one table and a single API, and I wanna connect this to Git. So start out, select the Git provider that you're using. I'm gonna set up an empty GitHub repo. So it asks if you have an empty repo ready. And so here I'm, I've got one started. I've got a name, a description, I'm gonna set it to private. And at that point, that's the only thing you need to do on this screen. So save this, create the repository, and then copy the SSH URL. So we'll say, yes, we have an empty repo. And then paste that URL here and use that to generate the key. So this gives us a value that we can copy back to GitHub now. So I'm copying that and then back in the repo, go to the settings and we're going to deploy key and then add new deploy key. So paste that in here. 
and then just give it a name. And then make sure you enable write access. So save this, add the key. You'll have to authorize this and you should have a two factor turned on. So let me get this real quick. All right, and then once that's connected, you can do everything from AppSmith. So back to the editor here and confirm that you've given the key write access and click connect git. And that's it, your app's connected. So you can start using git. And now I'm going to go back to the UI. We'll make an edit. And actually it's showing me here, I can't edit because the branch is uh, protected. We're on the only branch, the master one. And so right here, I can see that uh, I, I only have that one option. So I'm going to create a dev branch. And now I can actually see the rest of the editor. So I couldn't even get to the editor on the master branch while it was the only, the only branch available. Um, now that we're in the dev branch, we'll just do a couple small edits here. So I'll add a header and let's add an icon. All right, and now I can commit these changes. So you look at the commit menu. So I'm gonna add a comment, updated UI. It shows one page modified. So you'll see a list here of the different entities of the app that were edited, whether that's an API or database query, a JS object or anything on the UI. So we'll go ahead and commit these changes and we're pushing that to this branch. So we've went from the local edits that we made and actually uh, pushed the changes. You can look at the deployed version here, but we'll go back to the editor and so now that we've made some changes and committed them here, uh, now we can go to the merge option and you can see that we could go from dev to the only option is master and it's protected. So in order to actually push the changes, you can go to the settings and we have branch protection turned on. So I can remove that branch protection if you're just using dev and master update that and now i can merge the changes from this dev branch into the main or master so it checks there's no conflicts and you can go ahead and merge in the changes and then reapply branch protection and that's the simplest approach with just the two branches if you want like in the slide i showed earlier you can create another branch off of dev for each feature merge changes continuously to that dev branch and then set up branch protection and continuous delivery to pull changes from your dev branch into master and that's it in just a few clicks you can connect your app to git and get all the benefits of a low code application builder plus the added security and collaboration of using git now let's check back in with the team and see how the rest of the event's going